Okay, and so um, for example 12, we have a few problems here that we want to graph using the key features and state the domain. So um, one thing we can do is to complete the square since that's the topic here. And that will allow us to um, find some of the key features. Right away, I always like to find the y-intercept though. And the y-intercept is just gonna happen when f of zero in here, and this will equal, oops, let me write with that, equals um, negative nine. So my y-intercept is zero, negative nine. And remember that the y-axis the equation of the y-axis is actually x equals zero. Okay, um, and then if I wanna find the x-intercepts, cause that's another um, key feature, I can set f of x equal to zero. So I have x squared minus nine equals zero. I wanna factor that. And then I get my values for x, negative three and positive three. So that means my x-intercepts are um, negative three, zero and three, zero. So, so far I have um, three points. Now, if I wanted to complete the square, um, remember I could set C off to the side. So if I wanna write this in vertex form, I have F of X equals X squared minus nine. If I set the negative nine off to the side, then I wanna see what would complete the square. But because there is, B is essentially zero, this is already, com oops, <laughs> what am I doing? I just got out of there. Um, this is really actually already completed because you have this um, squared here, you could rewrite this as, I'm just, I would like to line up my equal sign, but I don't have enough space. So I could have it as X plus zero squared minus nine. It turns out the vertex is the same as the Y intercept. And that's because all this is, all this is doing this subtracting nine is giving us a vertical slide down nine units. So if you had um, y equals x squared, let's say, your y equals x squared would look like this, right? Here's 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1. And I, I want to label y, x, axes. Put on some points, right? 2. Well, actually, I might use a scale different than, two, than 1 here because I want to go all the way down to negative 9. And if I want it keep it on my graph, maybe I count by different numbers. Okay, so I won't, I won't graph y equals x squared, um, and that's just the origin there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and graph this. Um, I, because I wanna go down to negative nine, I might use a different scale and count by maybe threes. So I could have negative three, negative six, negative nine, and that way I get it onto the graph. And then um, I can use a different scale on the x-axis. I don't know why that keeps happening. Oh, maybe if I close that, there we go. Um, so I could use one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. These are my x-intercepts. And it's just gonna change how my graph looks. If you graph this on Desmos, you know, depending on the scale, it's just gonna change the, like the look of the graph um, because I'm not using the same scale on, I'm using three, six, nine, I'm using a scale of three on the y-axis. Okay, let's look at the next one and how it's slightly different. Here, if I wanna find the y-intercept, and I think that's the easiest thing to start with. If I start with the y-intercept and I plug in f of zero, I'm gonna get zero. So my y-intercept is actually at the origin, zero, zero. I can draw my y-axis and my x-axis and that is going to be my y-intercept, right? If I plug in zero, zero here, zero here, I get zero. Now, if I wanna find my x-intercepts, I want to set the whole thing equal to zero. So I'm gonna solve f of x equals zero. So if I go x squared minus nine x equals zero, to factor that, 
I want the GCF. So my GCF is X and then I have X minus nine equals zero, which means that X could equal zero. Oh, look, because the origin is an X and a Y intercept. Whenever you have the origin, that's an X and Y intercept. So that was the, the one X intercept. If the other one would be X equals nine because nine minus nine would give me zero here. So I have zero, zero, put it together in an ordered pair and nine, zero. And then if I want to complete the square, I have f of x equals x squared minus 9x. And if I want to complete the square, I have to find out what am I going to add and subtract in order to um, make it a perfect square trinomial. So I would set it up equal sign x squared minus 9x plus something minus that same thing. I don't really have a lot of room over there. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Okay. Um, so I'm to complete the square, I want half of nine, which is 4.5, and then I want to square that. So it's actually going to be easier if I just go nine halves, negative nine halves squared. And I can square both of that's 81 fourths. 81 fourths. 81 fourths. So I'm dealing with a fraction here. Then my perfect square trinomial, I'm just going to change colors here, is going to be x minus because of the minus here. And then what number times itself gives you that squared? Well, that was the 9 halves squared minus 81 fourths. Now it's a little bit tricky to um, graph these fractions. So I would say Let's just turn them into decimals. Essentially, my vertex is going to be half of nine, and it's the opposite sign. So that's 4.5 is my x value. And then my y value, how many times does four go into 81? Let's see, four goes into 80 20 times, and then four goes into one uh, 0.25 times. So that would be 20.25, right? So that's my vertex. And then I want to put it all together into um, a graph. Now, on your quiz, you're just going to have to sketch a graph. So um, you, you don't have to draw the scale out. In fact, because of the, the decimals and stuff here, I would have to really change my scale up quite a bit. But if I want to plot this point, 9, 0, I could count again by 3. So I'm going to go 3, 6, 9, use that scale. There's my y-intercept. Um, halfway between zero and nine is the 4.5. So that means 4.5, where's 4.5? Is that half? That's basically halfway here. 4.5, this is our axis of symmetry. X equals 4.5. And then to get down to 20.25, I might count 5, 10, 15, 20. And I'm a little bit over that. So... That would be my vertex here. I've got all my key features. And I'm just drawing a sketch. It's not super accurate, but again, you might look on um, Desmos just to confirm and to double check. But make sure you can do all these things. We want to find the y-intercepts, x-intercepts, and vertex. Those are going to be our key features. Somebody was asking earlier about domain. So once the only way, oh, the domain is actually all real numbers. What you were asking about is the range. The, you always have to know the vertex to know the range. And so that's what's really handy about writing this in vertex form, which was right here. So the range, the domain is going to be all real numbers, and we write that as negative infinity to positive infinity. And then the range is going to start, uh, the smallest number is the minimum value because this opens upward. So the minimum value is the smallest y value, 20.25 to infinity. Okay, and then let's just do this one last problem while we're on a roll here. So the first thing I notice is the negative sign in front of the x. And that basically is an indication to me that the problem is going to open downward. In order to put it in vertex form, I will have to deal with that negative. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that in just a moment. But let's start always with the easiest thing, which is the y-intercepts. 
The y-intercept is 0, 1, because if I plug in f of 0, the only thing left is 1. So that's my y-intercept. I might even just go ahead and start to draw my x and y axis. Here's my y axis, my x axis. I'm always gonna put a scale on. So zero, one would be here. And it is opening downward, right? So I know I'm gonna have this kind of shape, although that's not entirely what it will look like because that might not be the vertex, right? Um, that's just one point. So. 0, 1. So I know I'm going to have x-intercepts. The problem is I can see right away that this is not factorable. So there's a, another little bit of tricky thing that we can do. Once we complete the square, we could solve for those x-intercepts. So let's talk about how we would find the vertex next. So for the vertex, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that negative sign. So I have f of x equals negative x squared, if I factor it out from the first two, that becomes minus 4x. And then I'll put the plus 1 off to the side. Now, I am going to be adding a number here. And I'm also going to be subtracting that number here. But notice that because of this negative here, I'm going to be subtracting a negative, which is the same thing as add. So I'm going to be adding it into both places. And I know I'm, um, I would recommend, if I were you, using more space, OK? Because I'm already into my graph, which doesn't look great. So does that make sense why I'm changing that to an add? It's weird because you're saying, well, I'm adding here. Normally, I'm subtracting. But because I have a negative that would have gotten distributed, right, I would, I would be subtracting a negative, meaning I would add. It's a little bit tricky. OK, in order to complete the square, I have half of negative 4 is negative 2. And when I square that, I get 4. So that's a perfect square trinomial. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to balance it out. It would have been minus negative 4, which is the same thing as plus 4. So now I have f of x equals negative x minus 2 squared. That's how that would factor right? It's a perfect square trinomial. And then I add these two things together. So I have plus five. And right there, that tells me my vertex. Okay. Um, and the vertex would be two, five. Okay. So on my graph, I had zero, one, one, two, one, two, three, Probably should erase some of this. Okay, so I have my y-intercept 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? 2, 5. Here's my vertex. It's opening downward. And then I know it's going to go something like this and something like this. I can also find a symmetrical point because I have my axis of symmetry is at x equals 2. So um, if I have two points over this direction, I would have two points over this direction. So this point right here. And then you might notice that, I mean, if you do try to factor the original problem, it's not factorable. And I know that because I can't think of any two numbers that are going to multiply to 1 and add to 4. So that's how I know it's not factorable. But because I have it set up like this, if I wanted to, I could actually solve for these x-intercepts. I will tell you right now they're going to be irrational. Sometimes I erase too much. Okay. Anyway, you can draw it more beautifully than me. So that's a whole other thing right there. I wonder if I can actually add a page. Oh, I might be able to add a page right here. Where am I? Let's see. Add page. Okay, if I wanted to find the x-intercepts, this is kind of a really cool thing, um, is that I can set that equal. Remember that when I find the x-intercepts, I have f of x equals zero. I'm going to set this to zero. So I have negative x minus 2 squared plus 5 equals zero. If I solve for x, I'm going to find those x-intercepts. And, and they're going to be irrational. Okay, 
So to solve for X, I'm going to use what's called the square root method. And you could have also um, used the quadratic formula, but the square root method is going to be pretty handy because we have this binomial squared, so I can isolate x so long as I get everything away from x. To do that, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, so I get negative x minus 2 squared equals negative 5. I can divide by negative 1 to get rid of that negative sign out in front, and I get x minus 2 squared equals 5, and then to solve for x, I'm going to take the square root. The square root undoes the square. And here's where it ends up looking like the, the uh, quadratic formula, because you get x minus 2 equals plus or minus square root of 5. Now all I have to do is add 2 to both sides, and we get x equals 2 plus or minus square root of 5. And that's where it is irrational. On Desmos, it, if you graph this on Desmos, it is going to show you the decimal equivalent. And I would honestly need to use a calculator in order to figure out what that is. So your x-intercepts are 2 plus the square root of 5, comma, 0, and 2 minus the square root of 5, comma, 0. And um, like I said, if you put that into a calculator, you can get a decimal equivalent. And on Desmos, you'll end up seeing the decimal equivalent as well when, once you um, click the key feature of the graph. Okay. So, so does that make it 